Have you ever wondered how Netflix is able to stream your favorite shows without any performance issues? Back in 2011, Netflix built its own content delivery network or CDN, OpenConnect. OpenConnect CDN is a globally distributed network. As per Netflix, the goal is to provide highest quality viewing experience to millions of its users. A content delivery network or CDN is a globally distributed network of proxy servers and their data centers to serve content from locations that are closer to user. In this case, if we see, we have seven proxy servers in different different continents and there is one main server. All the content that is first uploaded to main server is being replicated to the proxy servers so that all the requests which are originating from clients in this continent can be served by this local proxy server which will be huge performance boost this is what a cdn does generally speaking static files such as html css and js photos and videos are served from cdn although there are some cdns such as amazon cloudfront which supports dynamic content as well. The site's DNS resolution will tell clients which server to contact. The goal is to provide high availability and performance by distributing the service in local regions which are closer to end user. Can you take a guess on how much percentage of global internet traffic does Netflix contributes to? Let me know in the comment section. Netflix partners with internet service providers by installing open connect appliances at their data centers. OCA devices are high speed and high storage devices which can store encoded video and image files and they serve these files via HTTP or HTTPS to client devices for example set of boxes, mobile devices or smart TVs. Netflix provides the hardware which is OCA and ISPs provide the power, space and connectivity. ISPs can directly control which of their customers are routed to their embedded OCAs. ISP partners with embedded OCAs also use network peering for resiliency and to enable efficient nightly fill and updates from Netflix. Pairing in simple terms is a process by which two networks connect and exchange traffic. Most traditional pairing arrangements are settlement free, which means involved parties don't pay each other for the traffic exchange. This is not to say that pairing is without any cost. Some fixed cost is always involved such as pairing ports, power and other equipments. This way, Netflix is able to deliver almost all of its content from local OCAs rather than upstreaming from the internet, which is a huge performance boost and this reduces the global internet traffic. Globally, close to 90% of Netflix traffic is delivered by direct connections between OpenConnect and residential internet service providers, which their customers use to access the internet. This way, Netflix reduces huge volume of traffic on the internet. Now we understand that how Netflix uses OCA to deliver content to the locations closer to end user. Now let's talk about how Netflix pre-positions content on their CDN network. Take the continent of Australia, for example. All access to internet content that does not originate in Australia comes via a number of undersea cables. Rather than using this expensive undersea capacity to serve Netflix traffic whenever any user requests for their content, it will be quite efficient to place the content in the local servers of this continent. All the content that is created in US by Netflix will be stored in some common repository. Netflix copies each file from its US-based storage repository 
to local servers within Australia. Netflix performs this action during off-peak hours when they are not competing with other internet traffic. After each file is available on this continent, it is then replicated to dozens of open connect servers within each ISP network. This way, whenever any user requests for that content from this continent, it can be served from the local CDN. This type of content delivery network is referred to as push CDN where we pre-position our content on the CDN. Push CDNs receive new content whenever there is any change on your main server. You have to take full responsibility of providing the content. In this case, Netflix takes full responsibility of pushing content to local servers on each continent. The content is only uploaded when it's changed or it's new. Content is placed on the CDNs once instead of being re-pulled at regular intervals. There is another category of CDNs which pulls content at regular intervals from your main server. Those are referred to as pull CDNs. Let's understand pull CDN with same example. In this case, we want pre-position the content on the CDN. The very first time a user requests any content which is not there on the CDN, the CDN pulls the content from the server hosting that content. So the first time the CDN has to pull the content which means you won't see any gain in the performance. However, once the content has been uploaded to the CDN, it will be available to everyone that is closest to that CDN. This will result in slower requests until the content is cached on the CDN. A time to live TTL will determine how long the content on the CDN will be valid. In this case, the pull CDNs minimize the storage because they are not prepositioning the content, but it can create redundant traffic if files expire and are pulled before they have actually changed on the hosting server. Let's talk about advantages of a CDN. Serving content from CDNs can significantly improve performance in two ways. Users receive content from the servers which are closest to them and your servers do not have to serve the requests which your CDN can fulfill. So this request can be served by the local server and you don't have to connect to your main hosting server. There are some disadvantages of using CDN as well. CDN cost could be significant depending on the traffic. Although this should be weighed with additional costs you would incur for not using a CDN. And if, if you are using a pull CDN, content might be stale if it's not getting updated before the TTL expires. A pushed CDN can put added strain on your server if it's under power for your traffic or you have a lot of changes in your content throughout the day. The reason being pushing all of your data and any changes as they happen takes work on your server's part. If your server is already struggling under heavy load and you're trying to sync content from server to CDNs that can do more harm than good. So we have discussed push CDN and pull CDN. So how to decide which one is best for you? The decision on which CDN type to go with revolves in a large part around the traffic and downloads. The, let's say once you create any content, it's not going to change in future. In case of Netflix, once it creates any episode it's not going to change that episode later on so in that case it makes sense to use a push CD in case your content is changing at some intervals it makes sense to use a pull CDN using that you can save up on storage as well as you can serve your users with the latest content 
by making use of TTL and refreshing your content before it expires. And there is always a trade-off between response time, cost and storage space. So you have to evaluate all these parameters for your specific use case and decide and then decide which CDN to go with. Hope you have learned something useful. Thanks for watching.